Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So after seven days of uh, what has been mostly talks, today is uh, kind of an interesting day in the agenda, as you must have all seen. Uh, we're going to do a hackathon uh, for most of the day. Uh, uh, based on Azure ML. But before that, uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Manish with us, uh, Manish Gupta from uh, Microsoft uh, Hyderabad. He's part of the uh, development center uh, there. Uh, uh, Manish did his master's from IIT Bombay, and then he was with two years at uh, Yahoo, uh, after which he did his PhD from UIUC. Um, he's also an adjunct faculty at uh, IIIT uh, Hyderabad, and he's been with the, uh, he's in a senior applied scientist uh, at, uh, with the Microsoft Bing team in Hyderabad. So without much further ado, I'll let uh, Manish uh, take over the stage and uh, begin his talk. Thank you, Manish. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Satish. Uh, so uh, let's start today's day. So everyone is energized even after seven days of torture. OK, so I'm going to do a little bit more of torture, uh, but hopefully you will enjoy it. Okay. So uh, I'll be talking today about entity mining uh, and, and the kind of work that we do at uh, uh, Microsoft uh, in, in Hyderabad. Okay. So, uh, uh, how many of you have heard about entity mining, or uh, you know, or, or done some sort of research in entity mining? Working? Oh, okay, okay. So good. So, uh, uh, how, uh, and and uh, so all of you are uh, uh, master students, bachelor students. How many bachelor students? Okay, uh, master students. Oh, majority of you. I mean, in fact, are are, are uh, masters or PhDs, right? So. So that's good. So, uh, um, uh, so hopefully, if you are doing your PhD in, say, text mining or uh, information retrieval or web mining, this area would be of interest to you. And even otherwise, I think the last part is going to be of interest to most Indians because it's about cricket. So anyway, so uh, let's start. Um, so entities are essentially everywhere. So uh, I mean, that's a new way of looking at objects. Uh, entities are objects that have an independent existence, like people, locations, books, and so on. Okay. So that's we call. That's what I call as entities. And uh, entities are represented typically, uh, I mean, uh, you, uh, by a name and an ID. So usually, for example, in any knowledge base, which is basically a collection of entities, you represent them using some ID. Okay, so for example, Microsoft Satori has a particular ID, Google's Knowledge Graph has a particular ID, Freebase has a particular ID, and so on. Okay, and it has a particular name, a type. So for example, some entities are books, some are locations, some are people, and so on. Uh, attributes and descriptions. So on Wikipedia, uh, a place like uh, a Bangalore would have different attributes, area, number of people, po population, and so on. Okay? Uh, relationships to other entities too. So uh, a knowledge graph or a knowledge base typically contains uh, a collection of entities and also representation uh, in terms of connections with other entities. Okay? So knowledge bases, you, I, I think uh, most of you would have heard about most of them. Wikipedia, Google Knowledge Graph, Microsoft Satori, Yago. Yago, how many people have heard about Yago? Some of you, right? So uh, those of you who have not heard, just uh, just look it up, uh, Yago, right? So there are lots of such knowledge bases available. So today's agenda uh, is about doing something about these entities, OK? And mainly, I'll be talking about three different problems, roughly 20 minutes each, OK? Entity linking. Uh, the other is dominant entity identification. And the third one is cricket linking, OK? So uh, let me start with the first one, entity linking. So here is what I mean by entity linking. Okay? Uh, a reader, I mean a user is actually reading this news page. And then uh, say he hovers over this particular phrase in the page. Okay? So forgetting Sarah Marshall. And then what happens is that, uh, uh, is, is, is that Bing shows automatically a particular task pane or a sort of an entity description for this entity. Okay? So it is about identifying phrases in which can be sort of linked to entities into uh, in the knowledge base. Okay? So identifying those phrases and then finally linking them. Okay? So uh, essentially disambiguating various other uh, entities which could actually be described by the same phrase and then finding the right entity in this context and then showing it up right here. Okay? So uh, that's that's one example. The other example is anyway uh, just another example. I mean uh, user sort of hovers over this and then. Uh, automatically, uh, the, the, the user is shown some such entity pane okay, in, in some other application uh, on, on uh, say, Microsoft tablets. Okay. So uh, essentially, the problem is as follows. Find, uh, there are two parts mainly. Uh, I mean, essentially, finding mentions of so, so essentially, the entire problem can be summarized as finding mentions of entities in free text. Okay. 
So the free text could be anything. It could be blog pages, it could be news pages, it could be, uh, it could be news articles, and so on. So it could be any web page for that matter. And you need to find out mentions of entities, where entities come from a known knowledge base. Okay? So entities could come from any of these knowledge bases, and free text could be from any of those places. Right? So um, not only find the mentioned entities, but also find the actual mention in the text. Okay? So the actual mention is usually a key phrase that is deemed to refer to the entity. So, uh, so oftentimes that's called as a mention, and the entity to which it is linked is basically the linked entity. Okay? So, uh, so first, so, so as you can now see, this problem is not really a one-step thing. It could be sort of divided into two main steps. One being finding all such phrases that can be uh, that are that are eligible to be linked to some entity, and then linking them. Okay? So, for example, in this particular text. Uh, somebody has found out these uh, these these phrases which can be sort of linked to some entities and the brackets you basically square brackets you see the entities to which they can be linked okay so so that's that so uh, so span for the mention of uh, uh, this particular guy and um, uh, then the the linkage is basically here right so, uh, so essentially entity linking problem is given a text document entity linking system takes uh, in inputs from the knowledge base and outputs at this particular offset, uh, 10 to 19, you could really link this particular phrase to an entity, Philip Hughes, okay? and, or, or Australia, and so on. Okay? So that's that. So now, uh, I mean, essentially, now clarifying the problem, digging a little deeper into the problem, there are basically these three phases that one can think of. One is mention detection, identify potential mentions. So for example, words or phrases are, uh, are of, of entities in the documents. right? mentions of the entities. Second is candidate entity generation. So given that phrase, now you could link it to a certain set of entities. Okay? So for example, if the phrase was just Apple, now uh, there are two obvious choices that you could link to. Right? So for each mention, identify candidate entities to which the mention could be linked. Okay? And then, of course, the third phase is entity linking or, uh, or really ranking. So essentially saying that, well, you have the candidates now, and you want to select the top one, okay, the best one that could be linked in this particular context. So if the context is talking about Facebook and Apple um, uh, doing something together, so then you need to really link it to the Apple company and not to the Apple fruit. Right? So depending on the context, you need to really figure out which is the best uh, ranking candidate uh, that, uh, that should be selected from these uh, list of candidates. Right? So now. Um, and let's let's look into details of each of those steps. So one by one. So if the first phase is mention detection, right? So mention detection, uh, uh, as you could sort of think of, it is more like a, I mean there are many many techniques, but the most prevalent one is named dictionary based technique. Okay? Where uh, uh, since we are interested only in mentions that could relate to entities in Wikipedia, we could build a dictionary of key value pairs. Okay? So essentially saying on Wikipedia you have all the entities. You build key value pairs, which basically say that well this is the value. Uh, value is the entity. And the key is how it is referred to. Okay? So for example, Sachin Tendulkar could be referred as Master Blaster. Okay? So the key could be a Master Blaster. The value could be essentially uh, Sachin Tendulkar. Okay? Or, or essentially, I mean, the value really should be the ID, unique ID of that entity. And uh, the key is really the various ways in which that particular entity ID could be referred to. Okay? Sometimes it is also called as surface forms. Okay? So the different ways in which the entity could be referred to. So key refers to a potential mention. Value refers to the entity that the man mention could link to. Okay, so, uh, for example, uh, Sanya Mirza could oftentimes be just called as Sanya in various articles. Right? So now how do you get these, this kind of map? So as you can see, we can sort of build a key value map. And uh, then whenever you get a piece of text, say a news article, you would uh, try to search for all the keys that are there in your key value map. And then we'll say that all these matching keys are really places uh, which we can call as mentions, right? Or things which we can, we can call as mentions. So now, how do you build this map? So you could build it from Wikipedia entity titles. So for example, if the page title is IBM and it is talking about IBM, you could just do this. You could build it from redirect pages. So basically, Microsoft uh, is redirected from Microsoft Corporation. So you basically can say that, well, Microsoft is also called as Microsoft Corporation. Okay? Uh, and then uh, um, you could build it from disambiguation pages. So essentially saying that if somebody is searching for Michael uh, Hakim Jordan or something of that sort, it should also really link to Michael Jordan and so on. Okay? So, so that's that. Uh, I mean, essentially, Michael Jordan is uh, popularly searched, and then it could possibly mean any of those two, right? So, uh, or any of these five anyway. Uh, similarly, you could get it from bold phrases in the first paragraph. So for example, uh, oftentimes Wikipedia, the first paragraph contains bold phrases of this kind. And from this, you could really infer that Hewlett-Packard company is actually Hewlett-Packard. Right? So uh, links to Hewlett-Packard, even HP basically means the same thing. Okay. Uh, 
uh, from anchor texts in Wikipedia. So for example, this anchor text, right, this is actually linking to this guy, so this, which basically can help you derive this kind of relationship. Okay? So, oh, okay, sure. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So, so, so essentially, you could really uh, uh, you could really build this map using various examples from Wikipedia. Okay. So, uh, various clues that are available on Wikipedia, you could basically just build this map. Um, also, if uh, Wikipedia query search logs are available, or in fact, I mean, for any search engine company who has query search logs, you could just use the most frequent queries to a particular page to really identify uh, uh, identify relationships of this kind. So, if somebody is searching for uh, spelling with a spelling mistake, right? And uh, most of the times, he really clicks on Maria Sharapova, the actual uh, correct spellings Wikipedia page. That's the one uh, 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 that can be identified as the most frequent spelling uh, mistake that people do, right? So, so that's that. Uh, now, um, so how do you use this for mention detection? It's sort of very straightforward. So, from the text to be linked, find the matches to the keys in the dictionary. So, essentially, uh, you have a news document coming in. You basically just find uh, uh, just find matches for those keys in the dictionary or in the mentioned map, so to say, and all such matches may be treated as mentions. Okay, all of them you can call as mentions. Yeah. Right, right. So, so that basically comes in the later phase. So, essentially, first you are trying to do just mention detection. So, you are just identifying Washington is something that can be linked. Okay. So, now the next part is what can it be linked to? So, now based on these uh, uh, these linkages that you extracted offline from, say, Wikipedia, you would say that well, Washington could link to the person Washington with the with the surname Washington, or it could link to Washington City, or it could link to Washington Museum, or any other things, right? So now, I mean, in the third phase, so these are all candidate generation that you generated. Now, in the third phase, you would actually do the entity ranking, and then you would actually use the context information. You would say. Uh, Yes, yes. So basically, I take the text. Uh, so usually, verbs and adjectives won't come because they won't be there in your mention map. So, so essentially, I mean, if you see uh, from the text to be linked, find matches to the keys in the dictionary. And in the dictionary, the way that you have formed, usually the dictionary does not contain verbs and noun phrases, uh, uh, verbs and adjectives of kind. I mean, usually entities are nouns in general, noun phrases. So, uh, so even the candidates are going to be pretty much nouns or noun phrases, essentially. Right? Okay. So, so any other questions before we move ahead? No? Okay. Uh, it, it would mostly be arbitrary engrams because uh, I mean uh, uh, because queries could be arbitrary engrams, anchor text could be arbitrary engrams. So, uh, so basically, what you are doing is deriving insights from what people have used to refer to an entity. So now, if people have used to refer to Sachin Tendulkar as uh, the god, now the god would also refer to uh, Sachin Tendulkar. And in fact, uh, I mean, for all we know, if there is an article on theology and somebody refers to the god, we might in fact consider Sachin Tendulkar as also a candidate. Okay? But finally, when ranking, we would remove him based on the context. So the context maybe does not talk anything about cricket, and then we would just remove him. So it could really be any arbitrary engram as such, uh, but mostly, most prevalently, it would be noun phrases in general. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions before we move ahead? No. Okay. So, um, so, 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 is is that clear? I mean, mention detection. The the thing is very simple. You first do an offline processing, generate that kind of a mention map, which basically is uh, the usual ways in which entity is referred to, linking to the actual entity. Okay. So, and then uh, at uh, whenever a news page or any random page comes to you. You basically find mentions uh, uh, as as those particular phrases which appear as keys in your mention map. Okay, okay. So that's that. Um, so for example, in this case, these things appear in the mention map, and uh, therefore they are sort of highlighted uh, in this piece of text. Okay. So now scoring the mention. So now an interesting part. Huh, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So basically, what should be the granularity of uh, things? Because of course, India would also be there in the mention map. I mean, because India refers to India clearly, right? So, uh, uh, so the, the point is there are various ways of doing these things. I'm just giving broad framework as such. 
uh, there are more details as to you could also consider, uh, I mean, now different people have different beliefs. So people consider overlapping mentions also sometimes. And then while linking, while doing the linking, they try to take uh, the longest mention that makes sense. So for example, in this case, I could really link this India to the country India web page. Right? But in the, uh, if, you, if you look at the context, it just makes sense to, consider, to link it to India Australia test series Wikipedia page, if there exists one. Right? So rather than linking it to Australia's Wikipedia page or India's Wikipedia page. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. India, Australia, India, Australia test. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will be inserted. So uh, when inserting, because the, uh, the insertion really happens when you are doing offline processing of the entire Wikipedia. So in the entire Wikipedia, there would surely be pages for India, Australia separately, right? So they would get inserted. In fact, even this gets inserted because, in fact, there is a separate Wikipedia page for India, Australia test series also. Okay? So now for mention detection, the point is you could detect India and Australia and India Australia test series all as separate mentions. But uh, in general, it makes sense to consider the longest possible mention uh, without any overlaps um, to be detected as as, uh, as potential mentions. Okay. It's it's a it's a one to many map in general. Uh, well, it could be in fact a many to many map. I mean, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, so, so both ways. So basically, Sachin Tendulkar can be referred by many particular things. The God, Master Blaster, Tendlia, Sachin Tendulkar itself, Sachin itself, or SR Tendulkar, and so on. Right? So all of these could link to Sachin Tendulkar. And also, uh, the same thing could also link to many other entities also. So for example, Apple could link to the Apple company, or it could link to Apple the fruit. Right? So essentially, it's a many-to-many -many map. And that's why the problem becomes difficult. If it were just one-to-one -one map, then it, life would have been easier. I mean, once you just detect the mention, there's no ranking required, really. I mean, that really directly links to the entity, right? But, uh, uh, but, but the way we name things, uh, I mean, humans uh, like confusion, right? So essentially, it's many-to-many. -many, uh, and uh, that's why entity ranking, the, the, the next two phases, candidate generation and ranking become important. Okay. Any, any other questions before we move? Okay, so, so that's the mention detection phase. So now, uh, the uh, one important thing to note is that not all mentions are equally important or relevant. Okay? So uh, although we, don't, we, we won't discuss filtering of mentions today, okay? but important thing is not all mentions are important. For example, candidates opting for IPS need to clear the fitness test here. Okay? So this is a particular, uh, particular piece of text. So now, uh, test could link to test cricket. I mean, in fact, your dictionary would say that, well, in my dictionary, test links to test cricket, IPS links to I Indian police service. But all of us know, I mean, in this context, test to test cricket does not really make any sense, right? I mean, it's basically about some fitness test and not really about cricket at all, right? So not all mentions are really important. Uh, uh, and, and, and therefore, one also needs to do some sort of cleanup. So basically, after you have detected these uh, mentions, using the mention map dictionary or essentially such kinds of dictionary, you need to do certain kinds of cleanup. You need to really be able to say that, well, this mention does not look good at all. I mean, uh, uh, and what entities it is linked to is a separate thing, but it just doesn't look good in terms of this particular piece of text itself. Okay? And that's what actually I will talk in the second part of this thing, uh, where I try to find the dominant mention. So essentially, I try to find what is the most important thing that should really be linked to in this sentence. So, so, so that's uh, just, just a side comment in some sense that not all mentions are really important and uh, one needs to do some sort of filtering. So we'll not go into details of what kind of filtering you can do, but this is the thing. Okay? So now the second phase of uh, entity linking, essentially candidate entity generation. So you have uh, this mention map and you have basically found out certain phrases that could be linked to some entities in the knowledge base. And now you need to do um, this thing, so uh, candidate generation. Okay? So for example, you have identified Apple, and yeah, now you need to really say, well, Apple could link to Apple the fruit, or Apple could link to Apple the company. Okay? So in case of dictionary-based approaches, the identification of entities to tag the mentions with is very straightforward. Why is it straightforward? Because, well, you identified Apple as a mention, because Apple was there in your dictionary, in your many-to-many -many dictionary. right? So now if Apple was there in the dictionary, of course, there was some value. And you could just take that value and say that, well, th those are the candidate entities. So essentially, consider the mention Sanya. So find all values from the dictionary where the key is Sanya. Uh, so this could include Sanya Mirza, Sanya Khan, or uh, you know uh, Sanya Remel Airport, and so on. So all of those could really be referred by the same surface form or by the same phrase or the same mention. Right? 
So now use those values as the entity set to be associated with the mentioned Sanya. Okay? So those are the candidate entities now that you have. Okay? So basically, uh, I mean, when you're reading a piece of text that Sanya uh, won the game or, or something of that sort, well, there could be three different things, say, that you extracted from this mentioned entity map that could really be linked to this, to, to this particular word. Okay? So however, we may want to do a better job. And uh, to do that, we may want to not completely rely on the dictionary. We may want to expand the entity set to include other entities too. Okay? So now, sometimes what happens is that the dictionary that you have may be biased. And so to expand the dictionary, uh, what you could do is to really, uh, say, search with the entity mentioned. So basically, take the entity mentioned with the context. So essentially, say, Sanya won the game, right? the entire thing. Uh, use any search engine with the, with the filter site as wikipedia.org and then get a list of Wikipedia entities that match. So this is another way of sort of expanding the thing. So expanding the uh, set of entities that can potentially be linked to this one, to this particular key phrase. Okay? So, uh, uh, but, but that's fine. I mean, uh, it's, it's OK to just uh, understand that really, uh, I mean, given the dictionary or the mentioned map, you could really get a list of entities to be linked to. Okay? So uh, now the problem, the third problem is, I mean, the third part of entity linking is to, f to do the ranking. Okay? So now you have identified that but for this particular phase or for this mention, you really need to, uh, uh, you, you have these candidates, set of candidates. Now you want to find out which one is the most, which one is the most fitting one, right? Which one is the best one given this context, okay? So, um, so essentially, uh, uh, I mean, and, and um, uh, so how complicated is this problem is uh, sort of shown here. So people have done this task over various data sets. And the number of candidates that they have come up with is like this. I mean, essentially, say for one mention, on an average, they could come up with 13 different uh, candidate entities. Okay? So uh, I mean, the Apple case is a very simple case where I told you just two different possibilities, Apple the company or Apple the fruit. right? And or Sanya's case that we saw, uh, we considered three different cases. right? So uh, but on an average, people have come up with like, uh, so for example, in this data set, people came up with like 73 different candidates for a particular mention. So the, the problem is really complicated. Out of these 73, they have to really choose the one, the, the most fitting entity, which can really be linked to this particular mention or the phrase in the, in the piece of text. Right? So now um, uh, entity disambiguation is really an important step. Um, and, and the way that it is done usually uh, depends on multiple things. So one, what kind of granularity you want to do that disambiguation? So it's basically a disambiguation problem. You want to really figure out what does the user really mean when he is referring to Sanya here? I mean, does he mean the airport? Does he mean the person or which person and so on? Okay? So the disambiguation can be done at the level of individual mentions itself. So you might want to disambiguate just based on this mention okay, and its surrounding words. Okay? Or you could do it at the level of a document. So basically say that, well, this particular uh, document Contains, uh, uh, contains, say, five different mentions. Okay? So one is about, uh, uh, say, cricket. One is about Philip. Uh, one is about Sachin. And the other is about, uh, say, the India-Australia test series. right? So now you know that all of them really, I mean, since the entire document is talking about one topic, all of them really should have to do something with each other. Okay? So essentially, uh, somewhere in the knowledge graph, Sachin should really be linked to India-Australia test series. Uh, and, and he should also be linked to cricket in some form. Okay? So basically, by, uh, by using this information of linkage across mentions, you could do better at disambiguating. Okay? So maybe, uh, I mean, uh, uh, one of the candidates for Sachin is also, uh, say, some professor with the name Sachin. Right? So now, uh, if you really know that the topic of the entire page is really about cricket, you would uh, uh, very easily check that professor out because he has to do nothing with cricket. Okay? So essentially saying that you could disambiguate at the level of a document. So ensure that mentions within the document are linked to entities in such a way that the document is linked to a coherent set of entities. So, uh, so, so the problem, I mean, if you, if you can sort of visualize, the problem is that you have a page. And on the page, you have detected, say, five mentions. right? And for each of the mentions, say, you have 10 candidate entities. Right? And you want to select the best entity for each of the mention. Right? So and of course, uh, one good thing, I mean, if you want to do it at the level of a document is that whichever five top, top one entity you would select for each mention should have to do something with each other. Okay? So there must be a coherent set of top five entities in some sense. Okay? So that's the disambiguation at the level of a document. You could also do it at the level of a corpus. So you could basically say that, well, uh, I have a collection of cricket articles. So now, uh, so for example, uh, say reports of the 2015 ICC World Cup cricket match. right? So now, if it contains somewhere Manish, right? Now you should not really link it to me because clearly I I don't play cricket, right? 
So, and uh, you could really establish that this entire collection is about cricket because you see a lot of different terms in it re related to cricket. Right? So, basically, this is disambiguation at the level of a corpus. So, consider mentions in other documents with similar surface forms and then use that information to perform disambiguation. So, maybe the context of a particular mention in this sentence is not enough, but if you see that same mention across in the corpus and which has very rich, uh, very rich context, so then you can basically say that, well, I can borrow the context from there and still make an inference about uh, what this particular mention should be disambiguated to, okay? which entity it should be linked to. Okay? So, uh, so, we will see uh, this, in, uh, this in action. So, I will basically talk about level of a document. Um, so, uh, so, so basically, uh, so, so, so basically uh, this thing is often treated as a ranking problem in the sense that uh, given a mention you have multiple candidates and you want to really rank those candidates such that you chose, choose the one at the top. Okay? So, uh, and then to do this ranking many times people do a supervised ranking. So, uh, so does everyone understand supervision, supervised methods, right? So essentially you, uh, you train using a particular data set and then you try to, uh, I mean, and, and using certain set of features, and then uh, at the test time, whenever you get this mention and certain entities, uh, candidate entities, you rank them based using that ranking model, right? So many times people use this supervision kind of approach, uh, or sometimes people use an unsupervised approach, so similarity assessment using vector space models and so on. So both of the approaches are quite common, but but I think but but majority of the people usually rely on supervised approaches, okay? Because it's just very easy to put plug in more and more features, and uh, and training data is very easily available in general. So um, can anyone think uh, how could you really get training data for doing this kind of supervised learning? I mean, any any ideas? If you want to do supervised learning for this entity linking, how can you get training data at scale? Hmm? Uh, so, so what do you want? You basically want that, uh, 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 so, so what, is, what does the training data look like? The training data should look like given this particular mention and given this entity, is it the right connection or not? Okay? Or maybe give a relevant score. So basically saying that, uh, say, uh, Apple, right, in the context of, uh, say, Facebook and Apple uh, announced some joint agreement or something of that, sorry. So Apple there in that context, and then say Apple the company, it is linked to an entity ID uh, called Apple the company. Okay? And then the label should be, well, out of five, I think this is a very good uh, labeling, so I give it a five. Okay? I mean, this is a very good match. Uh, while another instance would be the same uh, Apple in the same paragraph, and say Apple the fruit, and then I would give a score of zero, basically saying that, well, I don't think this is a really good match. right? So this is the kind of labeling I want. I mean. Uh, the labeling, which sort of, uh, I mean, uh, so, uh, something that gives uh, uh, a pair of mention and an entity uh, a label, uh, how good that particular mention entity pair is. So, huh? Crowd so you could crowdsource, but uh, that, that costs money, right? Can you do it in a free way and a very scalable way? Uh, yeah, I mean, not the true value, but it could be the mention and entity. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, so uh, any entity and the score. So, that's true, that's true. You're right. So, so basically, uh, yeah, I mean, you could also have uh, other mentions or context also in the picture. That's true. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. So, so where can you get such data? Huh? No, 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 but you are right. I mean, Wikipedia itself, because Wikipedia actually contains those links, right? So basically, people, when they are writing, so for example, consider Bangalore's page, right? So when people are writing about Bangalore, somewhere they will write that, well, uh, uh, Bangalore has this institute uh, called uh, Tata Institute or Institu Indian Institute of Science, right? And th with the Tata Institute, for example, they would link it to Indian Institute of Science page, right? So basically, uh, somebody in on Wikipedia, the editor uh, in Wikipedia has made a human uh, judgment that Tata Institute, as I mentioned, along with all the context on that uh, on the on the Bangalore's Wikipedia page, right, has linked it to uh, to to uh, Indian Institute of Science, right. So they have actually given us the positive label. They have basically said that this really means this, right. So that's the positive label. And negative labels you could just generate uh, based on everything that has the same name, Tata Institute, but is not linked, not linked directly by any any Wikipedia editor, right. So that gives you sort of training data at scale. And since you have training data at scale, supervised algorithms are usually much easier. Okay? 
So, uh, so that's that. So now, uh, of course, the supervised algorithms need some features, right? So what kind of features you could use? So of course, the first feature is entity popularity. So essentially saying that if William Clinton appears as a phrase somewhere in some document, the, uh, with a high probability, I should link it to the, the famous Bill Clinton. And with some probability, maybe link it to guys who are not known much, right? So entity popularity is, of course, one important feature. So how popular these things are. Of course, that doesn't apply in case of Apple, because Apple, the fruit, and the company both are almost equally popular. But uh, in cases where there are very easy uh, things, right? So for example, nobody would link Sachin to some random guy, right? I mean, most of the, most of the times, people are going to talk about Sachin Tendulkar. Okay? That's the thing. So entity popularity. Uh, then similarity, so essentially saying how similar is this mentioned text with the, with, the, with the entity name. So for example, this thing is very similar to this thing and then an extra artist, the six character thing extra comes in. So therefore, you would want to really link it to the one which is highly similar versus to the one which, is, uh, which has a larger edit distance. Okay? So that's that. And then finally, entity coherence. So basically saying that given a document, if you have, say, these three mentions, you would really want them to be very close to each other. Okay? You would really want them to be very close to each other in terms of whatever notion of semantic similarity you can think of. Okay? So now, I mean, this is very open. What could be the semantic similarity measure? It could really be uh, how close they are in a graph. So if you have a graph of entities, how closely connected they are, uh, it could really be, uh, so, so there are various ways of computing similarity between entities, but what you would really want to do is to really link these mentions to a coherent set of entities, a set of entities which are very close to each other in general. Okay? So, so essentially, this is what the linkages would, be, would, would then be. Okay? So for each mention uh, MI, find an entity EI such that the following is maximized. So basically, the paper really just tried to maximize the three criteria, the three criteria that I talked about, the popularity, the similarity, uh, similarity between the entity names as well as in terms of the context. So the context of the mention and the context in which the entities appear. Okay? And the coherence of all the entities appearing in the document. Okay? So, so the popularity, similarity, and entity coherence. Right? So that's that. Um, so and then you would just use a machine learning algorithm, a, a, a supervised algorithm as I mentioned. Take the mention entity pair and then uh, 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 try to learn from this data. Uh, as to uh, what is a good mention entity pair and what is a bad mention entity pair. And then after you have learned a model, just apply the model on, uh, on test data and then be able to say, well, um, uh, I mean, learn a binary classifier and then whenever a new mention comes in, just be able to say, well, this is a good um, uh, mention entity pair or a bad one. Okay? So that's that. So any questions before we move on to the other part? Mm -hmm. In the supervised learning classification example you are talking about, mm -hmm. Right. So, but when we mentioned the related code, mm -hmm. so maybe for one context, I'm referring giving most code to the Apple as a computer. Right. But if I have both the, if I want to give both of them, so in one page in a new paper, one, one context they are talking, in the same document, mm -hmm. one context they are talking on the fruit, one context they are talking on the one. So, how to sort out those kind of ambiguities? That is right. So, often time, so I mean, as I mentioned, I have, uh, uh, I have not put out many details here. So many times the context is restricted only to uh, like 100 words before this and 100 words after this rather than the entire document. Because it is observed that when people are writing long documents, oftentimes the context changes very rapidly. Okay? So uh, uh, I mean, many times it's uh, just the neighboring mention. So essentially, many features could be what is the type of the mention just before this and just after this. Forget about even 100 words. I mean, it's basically a very local context. So you could really do a local context learning based uh, thing also. So there are various kinds of features, but these are like the broad intuitions that people use. Okay. So, uh, so there are also features like there should be of, uh, the entity should be of matching types. So when I talked about coherence, really, I mean, I did not define really what I mean by uh, this similarity notion. Right? I just showed that these, these three are together. I didn't really say what similarity means. It could be similarity in terms of the attributes they share. It could be similarity in terms of... Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, the connectedness on the graph, or it could be similarity just based on type. So maybe the entire paragraph is talking about movies, and if Amir Khan comes in, I should really not link it to Amir Khan the boxer, but really link it to Amir Khan the actor. So, right. okay. so does that answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so, so there are cases where things can break. Agreed. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, if he likes to eat apples in breakfast, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, short text, it's always d difficult to do entity linking. But uh, maybe for breakfast, it can really link it to apple, 
to the right apple and uh, maybe it cannot. So uh, it's not really a 100% accurate method. In such cases, things can break. Yes. That again depends on the context. If you have the date, say, for, for the news article, you would basically be able to extract 15 from there. If you don't have the date, many times it's just the recent one. Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So Wikipedia usually has recent uh, ones, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the whole point is that, yes, I mean, it depends on uh, what is your knowledge base. So if your knowledge base does not have an entity, uh, you cannot just do anything. I mean, uh, entity linking is about taking this piece of text and trying to link it to a knowledge base. If the knowledge base does not have an entity, uh, uh, so that that uh, there is a different area of research. It's called as nil entity detection. So basically, saying that detect that this is a mention, but not link it to anything. Detect that it, this particular entity is not really present in the knowledge base. But for today's lecture, let's just suppose that uh, that that uh, the universe is defined by entities in your knowledge base, and uh, if uh, there is no, uh, I mean, it will just match to the best matching entity. Uh, uh -huh, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, but the problem, uh, so you mean the training data generation, right? Yes, so training data generation, the problem is that you don't know. So for example, anchor links, of course, exist everywhere, right? So you could really use news sites also. But those news sites should ideally link to the knowledge base entity. If they don't, then you don't know which entity it is referring to, right? So for example, uh, you might have, uh, say, Crick Info page. Okay? So uh, Crick Info, I mean, uh, it's about a match report, and they have linked Sachin Tendulkar, uh, or, or the master blaster, this phrase, to Sachin Tendulkar's profile on Crick Info. Right? But we don't know. I mean, the knowledge base does not know that Sachin Tendulkar's profile is really talking about Sachin Tendulkar, the entity. You know, there needs to be some link to say that, well, this is the entity entity ID. Sachin Tendulkar has an entity ID in, say, Wikipedia. So uh, the, the, the algorithm needs to know that uh, when it is linking to Sachin Tendulkar's Crick Info page, that Crick Info page needs to be stamped with that ID to be able to say that, well, Master Blaster means Sachin Tendulkar. Right? So essentially, you could consider links within Wikipedia or also links from non-Wiki pages to Wiki pages uh, as, as, uh, as uh, uh, things that could supply the training data. Or, or, I mean, well, uh, to be more complicated, you can actually go a step further and try to sort of find the dominant entity for any random page on the web. And then you could also use non-wiki to non-wiki links uh, if you know that non that particular target non-wiki link is really related to an entity on wiki, okay? uh, where where wiki is very general. So I mean, it, Wikipedia could really be replaced by any knowledge base for that matter. It could be Microsoft Satori, it could be uh, Yago or Knowledge Graph, Google Knowledge Graph, and so on. Now, does that answer your question? Okay, yeah. That's true. Absolutely true. So this is a biased way. And uh, uh, so, so as I discussed, you could really rely a part of it on uh, non-Wikipedia things also. So I mean, you could try to sort of uh, generate the training data from non-Wiki sources to be able to have a less biased measure. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so exactly. So essentially, one of the features, as I mentioned, is popularity. Where popularity, you could really measure based on, uh, uh, so, so I didn't ma mention how do you f figure out popularity, but popularity really means of all the anchor text that you saw, how many times it was actually linked to the fruit. Right? So, so that sort of captures. I mean, the exact intuition is sort of captured in the first feature that I sort of talked about. Right? Okay? Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, um, so, so this is very easy to do usually. So from, uh, I mean, in general, what people do, they consider each Wikipedia page as an entity. Okay, so basically saying everything, each Wikipedia page is an entity. Okay, uh, if it has, has an info box, so you know info boxes on Wikipedia pages, I mean, structured, uh, text, uh, structured tables at the right top, right? So those are structured attributes of the entity. And then, I mean, uh, considering the first paragraph on that page, usually the first paragraph on, on that entity page, Whatever entities are linked from that paragraph uh, form the linkages. 
So that's the usual way of really creating a, a, a knowledge graph or a, or a you know entity graph out of Wikipedia. I mean, and usually people consider a first paragraph mainly because it is more clean. I mean, for the remaining paragraphs, uh, editors oftentimes link to pages which are not really linkable, but I mean they just link it uh, to enhance linkages within Wikipedia. Uh, although the Wikipedia guidelines say that uh, the linkage should be performed only uh, for the first time that that particular mention is uh, really uh, that particular mention occurs. But anyway, so that's the usual way of creating a uh, entity graph out of Wikipedia. Yeah. So there are two types. Uh, some goods which are copyrighted and the second one is that the goods get withdrawn in this moment. So uh, can we map the goods to some goods? Oh, that's a good question. So. Uh, we are not doing co-reference resolution in this particular case, okay, explicitly. So in the natural uh, language uh, processing kind of way. So natural language processing kind of way uh, has various ways of doing uh, uh, this co-reference resolution, the problem that you mentioned, right? So that the Cruise really links to Tom Cruise in the previous sentence, okay? But this thing is sort of a data-driven way to do the same thing. So essentially saying that uh, uh, Tom Cruise is, uh, I mean, whatever is the first sentence, right? So with the context, it should be able to link Tom Cruise to the right Tom Cruise in the in Wikipedia, uh, uh, in the knowledge base. And the same thing it should be able to do with the second Cruise also. I mean, the second mention of the Cruise also, okay? But uh, 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 this thing is done indirectly, in the sense each of them could either be done independently or it could be done by considering this kind of coherency-based relationship, but not linguistic parsing. So co-reference resolution is a way of doing it by doing syntactic linguistic parsing of English grammar and then understanding that, well, this cruise relates to Tom Cruise. But here, the same thing can be done in a data-driven way. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So as I mentioned, I mean, just the way you generate training data, right? I mean, you could just hold 90% of your training data for training and 10% for testing. So and just test on that 10% data. Benchmark data I mean, yeah, yeah, there are lots of benchmarks. So I mean, in fact, entity mining, I mean, uh, this entity linking is a really popular area. Last four or five years, people have been working on them. There's, there are lots of benchmarks, lots of data sets publicly available uh, to, to verify how good the systems are doing. And, and various kinds of difficulties of linkages. So, I mean, different difficulties of data sets. Yes. Hmm? Yes, sir, uh, when we are linking the uh, entity with the uh, Wikipedia page, so are we linking the entity to page itself or some keywords in the page? Uh, we are linking it to an entity. Okay, So, I mean, uh, uh, we are linking any phrase to an entity. Now, how do you represent entity? Uh, in, in fact, I mean, we are linking it to an entity ID. So now how do you represent the entity ID is up to you. I mean, the knowledge base may represent it as a collection of uh, uh, name of the entity, attributes of the entity, linkage of the entity with other pages, all, all other pages on the web which relate to this entity and so on. I mean, the representation could be anything. We are linking to an entity ID in the knowledge base. Yeah. So we assume that each Wikipedia page is really about an entity ID. So essentially, uh, every Wikipedia page has a unique uh, identifier. Okay? So that, that linkage is sort of trivial uh, in, in our case. But uh, that problem is a very interesting problem if you want to do it in general on the web. So And that's what I really call as the dominant entity identification problem. So essentially saying that given a page, really, uh, or, or given an entity, find all the pages on the web about this entity only. So in case of Wikipedia, it's a very trivial problem because, you know, I mean, en.wikipedia.org slash Sachin underscore Tendulkar really links to Sachin Tendulkar as the entity ID. Okay? But uh, Crickinfo's Sachin Tendulkar page is also about the same entity ID. Identifying that is not trivial. Okay? So and uh, th that's what the second part of the talk is, which uh, I would mostly skip because I like the last part. And uh, given the time, I'll uh, not talk about the second part. Maybe I'll talk about the third one. Uh, but any, question, any more questions before that? Yes, yes. So, uh, so basically, there could be features like uh, similarity between the context of the mention. So essentially, if it says master blaster, right? And uh, uh, there are various other things around it. So uh, the, the, the master blaster played as usual. Now, played is actually a very interesting word, because played actually uh, could be uh, uh, related to player, which might appear in that info box. Okay. So basically, uh, similarity between the context of the mention and 
the attributes and attribute values of the uh, of the Wikipedia entity page uh, is a good feature. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, another thing like uh, now Justin is a member of Parliament, so uh, in, in his Wiki page, it's not only about the cricket association, but it may be about also the political person uh, figures Sachin, and there may be a number of political other figures with the name Sachin. So this may create a problem. Absolutely. I mean, uh, so if it is like absolutely another copy of Sachin, I mean, uh, doing cricket, playing politician, I mean, uh, being a politician also, and from the same city and same year of birth and so on, it's difficult even for humans to disambiguate, right? I mean, the point is that there is no binary features here. I mean, it's really about the degree of match. So if humans can figure out based on some degree of match, the same thing the algorithm would be able to do. If humans cannot figure out, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, there, there are various distance measures. There are just too many distance measures. I mean, basically, it's just a, uh, it's basically a set of features. I mean, I just uh, uh, told the spirit of what kind of features you could define. But you could really have large number of distance measures. You could have WordNet-based similarity for all, all, all we can say, right? Or you could have Yago-based similarity, saying that, well, on Yago, I would like to see these two entities and how similar they are. And so so there, there are just a number of measures. A hierarchical structure of what sense? I mean, so for example, Karnataka is a state in India and Bangalore is a city in Karnataka. So, whatever property India has, which they have already, Bangalore will have. Them. Yes, yes. So, actually, uh, that's what I was talking. In fact, so. Uh, I mean, uh, so to basically identify a similarity between entities, one could really look at their tree distance measure uh, on WordNet, which WordNet is, uh, as you know, is a hierarchical uh, organization of entities, right? So if uh, uh, the article is talking about Mumbai and Calcutta, right, and then both of them are cities in India, so basically in WordNet somewhere, Mumbai, Calcutta would appear, and then they, uh, they are both cities in India and so on, right? Somewhere they will have a least common ancestor, which is very close to both of them, right? So essentially, saying uh, uh, tree distance is, is a good measure, is a good feature also to compute the coherence between linked entities um, uh, in, a, in a single document. Okay. Is it kind of to the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so in fact, uh, Microsoft. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, um, so on uh, Microsoft Windows 10 uh, will have uh, a browser called Microsoft Edge. So you would probably know. I mean, Internet Explorer is uh, being replaced in Microsoft Edge, and Microsoft Edge will have this feature. So uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I think even for India, they are going to launch the feature, or probably they've already launched. I don't know. But uh, I think, yeah, uh, the, the public release will happen uh, sometime soon, I think. So there, uh, uh, when you say, when you uh, basically select some text, you could really uh, select, I mean, and then say, show insights, or some other uh, thing. Maybe ask Cortana or something of that sort, or ask Bing. I don't know the exact text. But you could say, show insights in some sense. And then it will open up a pane uh, at the right-hand side, showing more insights about it. I mean, the way I showed in the beginning, uh, in the first few figures, right? First two figures. Uh, the, the difference is that this is going to be user, I mean, it is going to be easily usable. So, for example, you know about those systems, but uh, uh, your parents may not know, for example. Right? I mean, uh, what I meant is common users may not know. But this, uh, since it is going to be integrated with the browser, it's going to be accessible to more people, more easily accessible, right? And, and then, of course, I mean, the accuracy also matters. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, so, so the system that we are training will be based on large number of benchmarks, large number of, uh, large amount of data. I mean, uh, I don't uh, really have comparisons with Dexter, but yeah, it's going to be, uh, or, or any other systems for that matter. There are many other systems. There are, there's a popular system called IDA by Max Planck University. That's a very good one. So uh, there, there are many such systems available publicly. Uh, it's just that this is going to be a commercially available thing uh, uh, and easily accessible, essentially. Okay. Okay. So any, any other questions? No? OK. So I have a couple of minutes. And I will talk about cricket, uh, cricket linking, because I like that problem. Okay. So I'll quickly just uh, go there. And, uh, and it also relates to the entity linking thing very nicely. So that will help us. Uh, uh, they'll help us, okay? So, okay. So the problem is like this. I mean, how many of you, uh, I mean, uh, read cricket info reports? I mean, I, I assume very few people. Or any cricket match reports, man. I mean, any report for that matter. Times of India, Indian Express, someone would be reading some reports, right? No? 
very few people people are not so how many of you are cricket, cricket enthusiasts i mean at least like to know about cricket ka score and so on most of you right i mean i assuming anyway so well i am so i hope uh, most of you are so anyway so the point is this uh, i want to do the similar kind of entity linking but this time it's a little complicated and the complication comes uh, because of the new problem setting okay so let's look at the problem setting so here is a cricket article okay just like the news article that i was talking about in the previous thing but rather than really selecting say mohit sharma or r ashwin right i mean these things which can be linked to good entities i mean for which wikipedia entity exists right my linkage has to be done at the level of say uh, phrases long phrases or sentences which describe events okay so for example the loss of ahmed shehzad followed by soheb maksud in the space of three balls from umesh okay so this is basically a phrase and uh, uh, this event has to be linked to uh, appropriate uh, commentary balls so imagine now my entities are not from wikipedia they are really commentary balls okay so uh, given a 50 overs match with two innings there are total 600 balls that can be linked okay so uh, but then the point is that for this phrase i don't want to link to one ball okay i in fact want to identify how many balls should i link to because in this case really it is in the space of three balls so i have to link it to three different balls okay um so it's basically similar to event, uh, entity linking but here the entities are really events okay and uh, the point is that those entities don't exist in the knowledge base as such okay so i mean in fact uh, the knowledge base here really is just about 600 balls of commentary and uh, I, i want to link it uh, link this particular phrase to a set of those balls so how do, how do i do it is a, is a, is a question okay so uh, so so any uh, i mean uh, we don't really have much time but any ideas how would one go about doing this i mean mm -hmm. a few balls exactly how do you decide what is the right number exactly that's the challenge by itself okay so and and here let's assume that mention detection is done okay let's assume that here we have the user proactively selecting i mean uh, uh, you user actually uh, doing an interactive thing as in the user has selected this phrase and then told us get me the best uh, commentary balls that can be linked and why is this important this is actually important because say i am reading a commentary report and i don't have time to go over the entire 300 balls commentary i just want to drill down Uh, from this summary into details of a particular event only right so that's why it is interesting and important okay so now um, how do i do it um, uh, is is the thing right so uh, so the way i mean essentially provide an ability to the user to zoom in on a particular event mentioned from a match uh, report and read the ball commentaries most relevant to the event okay so huh? you had something okay no right right so i think the first step is basically to get a more uh, structured uh, knowledge base out of those right so essentially so for, uh, i mean i'll just go over a few things so basically examples are like this so this guy produced a scintillating 119 from 110 balls so this phrase should link to the 110 balls i mean theoretically so ideally i mean uh, well well practically you cannot show all the 119 balls here or uh, 110 balls here but theoretically it should really link to all the 110 balls in which he batted similarly brilliant bowling figures of 2 for 47 in 10 overs So now this should, this phrase should link to the 60 balls or the 10 overs that the that the player bowled, right? Uh, a sparky cameo of 29 from 25 balls. This phrase should really link to the 25 balls in which the guy actually uh, did the batting, right? Uh, Harbhajan and Munaf Patel actually put together a spell of 19 balls for just eight runs. So this should link to the 19 balls. I mean, uh, essentially, it's like uh, uh, people bowling in tandem, right? Together and uh, what was the overlap essentially, right? Uh, and then i mean as generic as this the india innings if somebody selects it should really link to all the balls in the india innings really right so it's uh, it's a, it's a, at a different granularity so some balls could some some of these phrases could link to just one ball if say for example it is describing a wicket um, a, a, a wicket getting dismissed and so on okay so uh, and and i mean well the problem definition is quite generic you could actually uh, uh, basically compare it with the football itself so you could try to link mentions in football uh, match reports to minute by minute commentaries in football or uh, you could also try to uh, match uh, you you could also try to do this same thing for chess where basically you have a description of the chess match and then you could or chess game and then you could really link phrases to different moves in chess right and, and or commentary by move and so on okay so um so the way i mean the the the, di the, the basic system diagram is like this you take the match commentary do a structured parsing of the match commentary to be able to extract as much information as possible 
I mean, uh, uh, what event happened as in, was it a four or a six or a dismissal or, um, you know, all kinds of events uh, was the thing referred to the empire and, uh, empire and so on. So, so essentially, lots and lots of such structured parsing. So who was the bowler, who was the batsman, who was the, uh, which is the country he was uh, playing for. I mean, all kinds of things that could potentially appear in match reports. Okay. So and then uh, uh, also derive some entities on top of them. So essentially, since we know cricket, we know that uh, uh, one could not refer to a random collection of balls. There needs to be some collection of balls which can be defined by all balls uh, in which a particular player batted, or all balls in which a particular player bowled, or all partnerships between people, or all balls in which a particular player hit force, and so on. So basically, you could really define a collection of balls and extract derived entities. So, I mean, uh, if, if you think of it in the general framework of entity linking, people usually try to link phrases to entities which exist in knowledge base, and people don't care about uh, collections of entities as such. So, for example, uh, I mean, now, now this is a specific problem, but in general, say, if some page is really talking about fruits are good for health, so now, uh, usually nobody cares about linking fruits to a collection of entities, which could really be called as fruits, right? So, but this, this kind of work sort of tries to bring in that intuition that there, there, there is interesting stuff uh, which can be done if you can link collection of entities. So, so where collection really can be derived based on the domain knowledge. Okay? So, derived entities computation. And then for the mentions from a match report, so when a new match report comes in, you basically do a lot of, uh, um, a lot of parsing. So, essentially, since this domain is about people, right? I mean, people and people playing, uh, co-reference resolution makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, then, uh, then doing post tagging, NER, sentiment analysis a little bit, um, uh, and then, uh, uh, then there are the usual things. I mean, the mention type detection. So here, by doing mention type detection, I try to sort of first understand whether this is a single ball mention or a multi ball mention, uh, because single balls are usually very easy to link, while multi ball cases are usually difficult, uh, especially because in the multi ball case, you have to first identify how many balls you should link to, uh, or, or what particular derived entity you should link to in general. Um, while in a single ball case, it's uh, usually very easy uh, if you can understand what particular entities are playing a role in that event. Okay? And, and you have done sufficient parsing of the commentaries. Okay? Um, so and then mention subclass detection. So in both the cases, the single ball case as well as in the multi ball case, uh, uh, so, so we do a lot of uh, uh, subclass detection as in um, if it's a single ball case, what kind of th um, ball is it? I mean, is it a dismissal? Is it a uh, is it a four or a six that is being described? Because certain match reports talk about, uh, say, all sixes by Sachin, right? So and then uh, and, and then they describe in details about how the shot was awesome and so on. So so uh, uh, and and then again in the multi ball case there could be subclasses like uh, it's talking about a partnership or a spell together or it's about uh, somebody's batting or somebody's bowling and so on. Okay? Uh, and then uh, identifying candidate entities. So here candidate entities for the single ball case would be just a set of balls. So uh, what set of balls, uh, uh, I mean, uh, could potentially be linked to this particular mention? Or uh, in the multi-ball case, it could be a set of derived entities. So what kind of different entities it could be linked to? So essentially, can it be linked to batting by Sehwag, or all balls in which Sehwag batted, right? Or, or can it be linked to partnership between Sehwag and Sachin, and so on? So those are the, uh, those are the different uh, candidate entities. And then finally, uh, there is this candidate ranking thing. Okay, so uh, the, the same thing that we discussed in the entity linking thing, candidate ranking and linking. So here, um, here we actually do it in multiple steps. So of course, the coherence, I mean, all the features that we discussed are important. But uh, the way that we have implemented for this domain uh, is, is what really matters. Okay? So for example, we uh, uh, surely do similarity match between that mentioned text and the commentary associated with each ball. Okay? We surely do that. But uh, the way we can do that, either we can do it in the unstructured similarity way. So essentially, we can say that number of matching words. So maybe uh, the commentary would say that, well, this was referred to the third umpire and so on. And then even the mention is going to say the similar things, use the similar words. right? So unstructured similarity helps. But oftentimes, slot match, I mean, structured similarity also helps. Where structured similarity really means uh, uh, things like, well, if, it, if this is a mention uh, where the subclass is about somebody's dismissal, then uh, this must have the bowler who dismissed the guy, the guy who was dismissed, and potentially the score at which it was dismissed. Okay? So if you really can sort of identify the slots that need to be filled, and then just uh, sort of map uh, particular balls with this mention based on those slots, it sort of gives an added benefit. Okay? So this, this particular thing really maps to the similarity part of the candidate linking. 
Uh, this part is really about coherency. So remember we said that the set of entities to be linked should be coherent in nature. So here the way you could define coherence is by sequential proximity. So when somebody is writing a report, at least in the same paragraph, they, main, they maintain a flow saying that, well, uh, the first wicket fell like this, the second one fell like that, and third one fell like that, and so on. Okay? So there, there is some sort of a sequential flow in, in, in that sense. So the same thing you could sort of exploit and then rank candidates, uh, re-rank candidates based on uh, what is the, uh, I mean, the sequential proximity in terms of uh, the, the, the ball which is linked from that mention. Okay? So, and then finally, uh, I mean, in this particular case, you also need to do some iterator handling because uh, for the multi-ball case, uh, you could derive entities, for example, uh, I mean, the derived entities could look like betting by Sehwag or betting by Sachin, right? But the mention could really be talking only about a part of the entity. So it could be talking about, say, uh, the, in the first six balls, Sehwag betted really well. Okay? So first six balls uh, really should map not to the entire uh, batting by Sehwag, but only to the first six balls. Okay? Uh, and then, I mean, so, so one needs to find such iterators, extract iterators, where by iterator I mean uh, iteration start, iteration end, and the unit of iteration. Right? For example, in this case, it is uh, uh, 0 to 5, and the unit is really balls. Okay? So many times it could be wickets. So the last three wickets fell very quickly. So it would really be an iterator uh, basically saying uh, uh, wickets 8 to 10, and, um, uh, and the iteration unit is wickets. So essentially saying uh, the iterator handling plays a role in the multi-ball case when doing the final candidate, uh, f final linking. Okay. So, okay. So, so, so I think, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, th there are more details, but I think more or less I will just stop here. Uh, yeah. Uh, th there are various details how we did that. So basically this is an example of iterator. So he started off in a frenzy, scoring 12 out of his first six balls. So there, you don't really want to link it to this entity batting by uh, Sehwag, but really want to link it only to the first six balls of that particular uh, derived entity, right? So, so that's that, and um, yeah. Uh, and then, then we did it over, uh, I mean, over a large number of articles um, from, from 2011 Cricket World Cup. And uh, I mean, overall, I think uh, we, we have like, uh, uh, I believe uh, we have like around 69% accuracy at uh, at, at being able to link single ball mentions and about like 56% for multi ball mentions. Multi ball mentions are usually difficult. So um, an F1 score of 56%, which is not very bad. I mean, if you look at the difficulty of the task overall. Okay. So anyway, so, so I think I will just conclude here. Um, yeah, so, so uh, the takeaways are as follows. I mean, we discussed uh, uh, not three, but two interesting problems in entity mining. One is entity linking and um, it's sort of application cricket. Um, and then uh, entity mining is a hot area of research. So lots of people have been doing lots of interesting things. Uh, and people have started to think uh, about words and queries as more of uh, real world objects as entities. Okay. So uh, things are moving towards entities and entity semantics. And uh, lastly, Microsoft being especially Hyderabad is an awesome place to work. Okay. So that's one of the takeaways too. Okay. So that's it. So any questions uh, um, uh, that, that you have now? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, there are more details. So to, to 2828 labeled mentions. So basically, 2828 uh, uh, phrases were linked to some uh, single ball or set of balls. Okay. So that's a reasonably large data set when it comes to manually labeling things. I mean, here we don't have auto-labeled data sets like Wikipedia. So here we needed to do manual labeling, really. Okay. okay. Any any other questions that you have? Huh? Uh, from which database? Uh, I mean, uh, so so you could pretty, pretty much use any languages. I mean, it really depends on what kind of formats it is available, uh, and so on. So I mean, well, I use C sharp for doing things, but uh, and I probably I mean, for in this case, cricket case, uh, I didn't even use a database. I mean, it was basically just a very simple thing because the number of entities were very small. I just used text file, but. I mean, yeah. So that, that's basic. Okay. So, so, the, so your question mainly is about uh, uh, um, about uh, uh, scalable implementation of such things. So I think um, in that case at Microsoft, well, uh, we have our own architectures in place, and uh, we use uh, our own specific query languages. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, well, there is a there is a very SQLish kind of language called Scope, 
but uh, there is no point I mean you knowing that because that is not externally available anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah people use Sparkle for, for uh, XML-ish kind of databases that is true. Um, uh, yeah I mean it really depends on how the, how the knowledge graph is available. So, the most of the knowledge graphs are available as RDF triples. So, yes, you could use Sparkle for, for those kind of things. And in fact, I mean, everyone really tries to have that benchmark in, in, in uh, mind that they, they just expose their knowledge graphs uh, as, as RDF triples. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. So, there has been a lot of uh, uh, talk about having Satori, Microsoft Satori as an API. Uh, so I don't have a definite answer as to is it publicly available right now or not, or if not, when it will be publicly available. But if you want to uh, have a definite answer, just email me. I will try to get an answer for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, so So I, I sort of get your point. So there is a lot of work in uh, semantic understanding, uh, uh, but uh, I mean, as uh, so my personal opinion is that most of that work is towards trying to standardize things uh, 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 from XML-ish perspective. So defining uh, more concrete schemas uh, to represent the world and uh, really talking about knowledge representation and things of that sort, right? So. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, in some sense, it is a step towards that because it also helps to understand the world better, uh, but not by, say, uh, real understanding. So, not by language understanding or not by, uh, yeah, yeah, not by la real understanding, but by understanding through data. So, this is more, I mean, this field is really data driven. So, if you have large amounts of data, your systems would usually do good versus, uh, say, uh, old linguistics or AI ish kind of systems. Uh, not old, well, I mean, uh, so linguists would really kill me, but uh, I mean, systems which are from that perspective, they don't really need much of data, but they depend more on grammatical analysis and stuff of that kind, right? So, uh, this is more of a data driven science, is what I can uh, best say, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, any, any other okay. questions? I think Manish is going to be around you know, for the whole day. Yeah, with I'll so be yeah. there for the entire day. So, you can okay. ask questions. Uh, so, uh, what we'll do is before he switches his hats and wears the hackathon hat, like yeah. we've done for all our speakers on behalf of the uh, summer school organizing team. Uh, let's thank Manish for, for the talk. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Manish. Thanks, yeah. Satish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.